Hello there, my name is Mr. Smartonkey. Welcome to Total War Warhammer. It's finally time. Well, it is for me anyway. It'll be a few more days for you guys, but uh, soon enough, we will all be playing Total War Warhammer. So, um, I've already uploaded a few videos, probably, by the time this will go up. Um, some multiplayer battles that I did with Legend Total War, Overkill Total War, and Hacks the Hunter. Um, but, obviously, I am mostly known for my campaign, so... I'm gonna start one. I was planning on waiting for the mods to release, uh, which CA have announced um, will be available on the full-on release. Of course, they. Uh, the reason I'm playing this now is because they provided me with a copy um, today, the 19th. Actually, it's currently after midnight, so it's technically the 20th. Um, but yeah, so thank you, a big thanks to CA for providing me with a, uh, a key of the game. I am just super excited to play. Um, but anyway. I was trying to say I was going to wait for the mods, uh, especially the um, regional occupation mod, which will allow you to take uh, the entire map essentially, rather than um, only your faction's um, like hold or town, depending on who you're playing as. Like the the, uh, the dwarves and the greenskins can take holds, and the uh, empire and the uh, vampire knights can take towns or whatever their, their equivalent is called um, but yeah the dwarves cannot take the human towns essentially and vice versa so that's the point but anyway so there was going to be a mod or there will be a mod that's going to um, change that so you can take whatever you want but I can't wait that long another four days or something before um, doing an actual campaign so we're going to just do it now um, I really wanted to play as Chaos because uh, they can't take anything anyway, so I was going to play them before the mods was released, and then when the mod releases, I would have played um, a different faction. But the Chaos is not available in the build that I currently have been provided with, because we are pre-release, essentially. Um, so yeah, they're not available yet. They should be in the next couple of days, but not yet. But anyway, I didn't want to just play the Chaos. I want to play all of them, technically. But we're going to start off with the Dwarves. Um, I think the Dwarves is the faction that I was most excited about since the beginning. Um, so, because, I don't know, I, dwarves, everyone likes dwarves technically, but you know, dwarves are just cool, they're heavily armored, they're uh, probably one of the easier factions, which is definitely useful, because I have played a few hours so far, I played with uh, the Empire, just as a little tester, have a little look at the game, get familiar with the mechanics, etc. Um, and on Legendary, I... It didn't go well, I can say that much. I didn't get completely destroyed, but their starting position, even though it's technically a normal initial challenge, is pretty rough, because they get overrun by um, greenskins, just cr like, like, like madly. There's just so many armies all over the place, it's hard to handle it all. Um, but the initial challenge for the dwarves is actually easy, so we're going to go with the dwarves, and hopefully I'll be able to do a little better with that. Um, I didn't record the Empire stuff, but um, even if I had, I wouldn't have uploaded it because I failed um, the campaign. So, anyway. So, the faction mechanics for the Dwarves can only capture territory belonging to the Greenskins or other Dwarf factions. So, that's what I mean. When the mod uh, support is released, that is uh, a mod that you can uh, use that so you'll be able to take whatever you want. Uh, grudges, enemy actions result in grudge missions, all of which must be settled in order to achieve campaign victory. And we can use the underway armies can choose to use the network of underground tunnels to avoid impassable terrain and enemy armies. We can also have a look at our uh, victory conditions, so short campaign, long campaign. We have to take uh, a lot of land, uh, unite the following dwarf holds either by direct ownership or through vessels and materialize a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we have to ensure that there's no active grudges remaining in the book, uh, active grudges remaining in the book of grudges, the great book of grudges, of course. Uh, we need to reclaim the following fallen drawer folds out of a direct ownership through vessels and material. I'm guessing these are raised. We need to destroy the green skins. We need to ensure that the uh, only military ally, uh, presence that the Warriors Chaos have is in the Chaos Wastes. And we need to ensure that our our Kaon, the Ever Chosen, is in a wounded state. And that's the um, Warriors of Chaos General, I believe, or Legendary Lord. Um, our top units are the Gyro Bomber, the Slayers, and the Iron Drakes. Our playstyle, we have durable units with strong leadership, excellent range of strong artillery, strong economy and trade options, large technology bone uh, tree with both military and civic branches. We have magic resistance, expensive unit recruitment costs and upkeep, um, no cavalry, small unit uh, military unit sizes, and no magic. But our playstyle, or our initial challenge, sorry, is easy. Um, I could also read, of course, this whole, like, stop this stuff, but I think you guys, and myself as well, want to just get into the game, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, we have to choose a faction leader, though, so we can go for either Foreground Grudge Bearer or 
uh, Ungrum Iron Fist. I'm actually going to go with Forgrim. Let's have a uh, look at Ungrum anyway. So he's a powerful melee fighter and leader. His faction effects are minus 25%. Uh, recruitment cost for Slayer units and minus 50% upkeep for Slayer units. He starts with these three extra units in the army. Thunderers, uh, Slayers, and Longbeards. Um, so these three units you get in your starting army, which is pretty uh, useful to have some like late game units in your army right away. And Forgrim, Grudgebearer, the guy we are going to go with is both the faction leader and the powerful melee fighter and leader. You can actually see he has an introduction as well, he doesn't. But you can't play the introduction when you're playing on Legendary, which I haven't mentioned as yet, but yeah, playing on Legendary of course. I did talk about Legendary just now and how I got wrecked, but we're doing it anyway. Anyway, so his faction effects are construction costs, minus 10% for uh, military recruitment buildings, and his upkeep for longbeards and hammers is reduced by 10%. His starting units are a Grudge Thrower, which is an artillery piece, uh, which is anti-infantry, which is pretty good. Uh, because of Quarters, the uh, crossbow missile infantry. Um, also shielded, interestingly enough. And Hammerers, a fairly late game um, hammer infantry unit. Just high damage, high armor, just a, a generally a good unit. Very well shielded as well. Magic resistances, etc. Um, so yeah, that's um, our faction leader, Forgroom Grudge Bear. He's the one who we'll be playing with. He's of course, has a bunch of um, a description about him as well. If you want to read that, go ahead. Um, but anyway, I haven't even actually looked at this yet, so... Uh, yeah, so it's the same as always. So anyway, let's jump into the game and watch a cutscene. The old world is a crucible of relentless war. It has ever been so. An era as long as the mountains are unyielding. storms gather again. It presents a chance for the brave to bring about an age of reckoning. I come to the Dwarf High King as a herald of such times. And so I find myself at the King's right hand. Presence is timely, but dire news comes from the south. Greenskins flock to the banner of a cruel war boss. Now, my liege, Thorgrim Grudgebearer, leads a mighty throng from Karazakarak, smashing aside any foes that block our path. desires to return the Taraz Angkor to its former glory, then he must rid his lands of vile greenskins. Those gathering within the shadows of Everpeak are a good start. Alright. So what I really love about this is that Oh, it's one of those, like, really minor things, but it's just so good is that they have brought back individual cutscenes for different factions, or, well, different cutscenes for different factions. Obviously, this used to be a thing in Shogun 2, and previous Total War games as well, but they took that out in Rome 2 and Attila, and it's just a minor thing, but I always disliked that about it, and now they've brought it back, and I'm pretty sure it's even different for each Legendary lore, but I'm not 100% sure about that. I haven't tried it yet, but this one was clearly about Foregrim the Grudge Bearer, um... So I would assume that if you chose the other legendary lord, 
he would get a different cutscene, or perhaps a similar one, but with like a different guy featured. Karaza Karak is secure, my Lord High King. Faced with your terrible wrath, the Greenskins rout, as is typical of their craven nature. The bloody spears still infest the mountains to the east, setting up their hovels amidst your sacred pillars. Another grudge that must be put right, and soon, for the lords of the other dwarf holes will not tolerate a high king that cannot secure his own realms. To the south, yet more vicious Erki and Groby lay ready to strike at your king. Seek allies amongst your own folk, for there are many grudges to settle here. The world shall be in thrall to the Karaz Ankor once more, and no creature, green skin or otherwise, shall stand in your way. All right, and with that, we get our first grudge. Beheld by the enraged gaze of Grimnir, the bloody spears of trespass of impunity all over the sacred mountains. Their forces scattered to the east and must be defeated in battle before their strength is regained. We need to defeat an army belonging to the following clan or following faction in battle on the bloody spears, and then we get a thousand bucks for that. Get out of here, your advisor guy. I don't need your help. All right, so I can't actually see what they own, but uh, we can see. Our own units, of course. We have four Grim Grudge Bear, our legendary lord. Um, he's got some pretty crazy stats, but you would imagine that. We've got the Hammers, which is the unit that we get uh, along... Oh, random dog in the background. I'm sorry about that. Uh, along with the uh, one of the Quarrelers and the Grudge Bearer. So we have uh, some Dwarf Warriors. We have some Miners. This is, a like I think, our, our lowest tier unit. It's pretty uh, poor. And it's still 80 armor, though, which is pretty crazy. What is this? Vanguard deployment. Oh, we can deploy it outside the deployment zone. Um, and yeah, two quarrelers and then the Grudge Fur. So we are pretty heavily ranged uh, right now. So if we do attack these guys, which we will do, we'll have to um, attack them from range, probably. So we currently recruit four units already. We have the... Actually, we... No, we can't. We need the Armory and the Gunsmith's Forge to require... Or to uh, unlock the Dwarf Warriors and the Miners, respectively. But we can already make Dwarf Warriors. We can already make regular Miners. So these guys have uh, oh, blasting charges, right? So that's why they're different from these regular miners. Um, but anyway, probably we just want to focus mainly on the, the Dwarf Warriors. It's a very tanky unit. Looks pretty good. Uh, anyway, before we do all of that, though, we have other stuff to look at. So I guess this is our Great Book of Grudges, um, which has the one grudge in there. So I think we need to make sure we do these grudges in time or we're going to get, like, downsides. And I'm imagining on Legendary Difficulty... It's going to go up faster than otherwise. All right. Um, we have our objectives. So this is obviously our... Oh, this is like... So it's just like one dwarf hold. Not an entire province. Oh, that's why there's so many of them. Okay, cool. Um, is this part of the same province? No, it's not. What is part of our same province? Okay, it's the uh, Bloody Spears, both of their towns. Mount Squighorn. Sorry about the random noise in the background. My dog is trying to... <laughs> I don't know what the hell he's doing. He's trying to find his place on... Oh my... Shut up. What are you doing? Okay, sorry. It's very unprofessional. This doesn't happen usually. Um, especially in the first episode. What was I looking at? Right, yes, the objectives. Um, but that's... that's Yeah, we've seen that. We need. We know what we need to do for the long campaign, so that's unimportant. We have uh, technology, a lot of it. Uh, we've already finished the way of the guilds and the way of the clans, but these are just our basic things. Income from settlements, plus 5%. Public order, plus 1 for all provinces. Uh, recruitment cost reduction. And more recruitment cost reduction. I think... I'm just going to go for this public order real quick. Because I like having public order immediately. Especially because we're on minus 9 right now. God, that is rough. What are we... Uh, building... Minus 8 from difficulty level. Minus 4 from taxes. Okay, so we need to get some happiness buildings. Is essentially what it's saying. Alright, so this is military. This will allow us to make the grudge for... Wow, that's... Okay, so it's a low-tier unit, but it's still good to have one early on, I guess. I don't know if I want to make this right away. Probably want to focus on some other things. We already have the sparring chamber. And that unlocks... Or that goes into the clan barracks, which we're going to probably make right away. Which will allow us to make quarrelers. And quarrelers are great weapons. Which I think are just better melee fighters. That doesn't change their range. 
So I don't think I want to actually make those. They cost more. Um, and then, let's see, we have nothing to build in, what is this, military support, but we can build infrastructure. Let's have a look. So this is growth and casualty replenishment rate. We have a bunch of money and resource of gems. We have income from trade, tradable resources, produ uh, production, and income from all buildings. And we have refectory for public order. That's a lot of public order. I'm tempted by this because we are just on very minor or minus public order right now. On the other hand, I feel like money is probably a good idea. So I think I'll build this for now. Maybe I'll build the other building in, in here. Um, I want to probably upgrade this too. So we can get some quarters. Probably a good idea. And then I think we're going to just attack that town. Actually, we should have a look at our... Well, treasury is not much to see here. We're already trading with the Barak Var. Which is good. Um, our faction summary, not really much to see here yet either. So that's unimportant. We are currently at war with the Bloody Spears, the Scabby Eye, the Rat Fangs, and the Greenskins. That's a lot of people we're at war with. Um, looks like over here as well. The uh, This is also Bloody Spear. Well, the Bloody Spears are a big faction. They own at least four regions. That's crazy. Um, five regions at least. Wow. Greenskins are down here in Black Crag. That's over here somewhere, I imagine. I have no idea. No no vision, so I don't know exactly where it is. Um, diplomacy. Have a little look-see at that. So, the Zufbar like us a bit as well. We currently don't have any way to trade with them. The Empire, they don't hate us. These people all hate us. Those are the Greenskin tribes, obviously. And then the Border Princes, they don't have any real fancy towards me. This is one thing I really like about this um, about this game is that they've had they added this thing where you can also already see like the likelihood of success before you even have go into the menu. So we can already see the uh, moderate chance for non-aggression with them. Um, probably a decent idea to get that. Okay, they're going for it as well. Maybe that changed anything. Nope. They don't want to trade. We can't actually trade with them, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so that's that. I think we're just going to go ahead and attack these uh, disgusting spear people and see how well that goes. If the game loads, there we go. So they have uh, Nashrak, Sword Infantry, their general. Orc Biggins, really? That's a uh, damage dealer bigger and harder. So that's a pretty late game, well, not late game unit, but it's a pretty good unit. Some Orc Boys, some Orc Ara Boys, and Orc Ara Boys, and some Goblin Archers. That's, um,. That's a pretty strong army right there, but I think we'll be all right. We got some hammers and stuff. We'll be uh, we'll be golden. So same as uh, Attila, this has the scout terrain thingy, so we can have a look beforehand what we're dealing with, but it should be fine. Um, also, auto resolving in this game is just an immediate thing. There's no like choosing aggressive, balanced, or defensive anymore. It's just an auto resolve. So if you pick auto resolve, you it just immediately does it. There's no backing out of it, so you don't want to accidentally click that. If you don't want to actually go for it, good to keep that in mind. But um, yeah, this should be a fun battle. I'm I'm kind of worried about those uh, orc biggins to be honest. They look pretty pretty strong. I need to have a look at the roster again for the the, the green skins and have a look at what um, like where these guys come in basically, what they cost in comparison to the dwarven units, so I know what like. What we're dealing with. Obviously, I can see their stats as well, but still nice to know or nice to see beforehand. So, we have the Grudge for us, so we obviously want to go on the defensive here. I don't know what the range of these guys is. Pretty pretty big. Okay, let's go further back then. Is there any, like, there's a tiny. Is this, is this really considered a hill? Probably not, but might be worth it anyway. Is this in range still? No, not quite. Never mind. Um. Like, if we go too far back, we're going to be on the downhill, so we don't want that either. So I guess we're just going to sit over here somewhere. That should be in range. Yes, and since this thing is anti-infantry, I want to just immediately start firing at those orc biggins. All right, quarrelers. You guys set up around here. Yeah, so we've got hammerers, dwarf warriors, and miners. So the miners are, like, the weakest of the three. These guys are really tough. Their leadership's a bit low for some reason. Why is our leadership so low? I don't know. Maybe that's one of their traits or something? The orcs have something against my guys? I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, we got these guys. Um, we got the dwarf warriors. Got more melee defense, actually, but it's just a lot less offensive unit. 
miners are eh, they're still like really heavily armored but generally not not quite as good but we'll um use them anyway obviously are you okay so he's armored and melee expert so might have a very strong melee attack or melee defense or high values in both some also have melee focus skills like charge defense use them to counter or other strong melee units when facing them it is best to take them out before they can enter melee Hmm. I'm guessing that's probably the, the case for all of those orc guys. Anyway, you kill them. Okay, so they are immediately coming towards me. I honestly wasn't expecting not to. Can I fire this thing myself, just out of curiosity? Yes, but there's no way I'm gonna get that right, so I'm gonna let that let the, the computer do that. Can I? I can't get out. There we go. It looks like we've already done some damage at least. Did we lose vision on some of the units? Yeah, we did, definitely did. So it looks like we hit that one. Oh, shots coming in. Oh my god, that is... Definitely, uh... Oh my god, yeah, this is taking them out pretty quickly. Okay, that, that's good. They are almost already here, though, so... We're not gonna get that many shots off. We're dealing some damage to these orb beacons. We haven't done too much health damage, but we killed a lot of their guys. So the, the ones that are still there have a lot of health left. But they've lost all the guys. Are, well, not a lot of guys, but a few guys already. Okay, we're firing as well. Probably want to choose targets here. Their range shoot. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah, I probably want to choose their range units, actually. Goblin R's. Get my uh, infantry up there. I wonder, I wonder if I should use him to flank or something as well. Looks like his general's going straight in there as well. Nashrock. Probably want to get my own general in there as well then. This is getting a little risky. Let's start firing at their. Uh, range units, so we got a few more shots in there, though. Oh, this is not good. We got the miners up against their best unit. We probably actually want to receive the charge, but it's okay. Alright, you go against N Nashrock. Okay, let's get these guys... Oh my god, we took a lot of damage on this miner unit already. They are dying. Oh my god, all my units are dying. Holy hell. Okay, you guys, don't, don't get in there. We need to flank these guys around a little bit. Try and shoot these guys in the side slash back. I mean, obviously we need to deal with this unit as well, but it's not really an option right now. Your lord is under attack. Well, that was generally the idea. Okay, just fire into that unit if you can. The miners are already about to go. This is why I was kind of worried about these guys. They are just... This, these are some strong units. Okay, we are nearly got... We nearly got their orc boys going. Nashrak's going in there as well. I want you to fight... Okay, okay, never mind. You need to go after against those biggins. If they'll go after my grudge, grudge bearers, I'm fucked. Yeah, after these guys, well, you guys try and kite them away then. Hopefully we're faster than them, but I imagine we're not. Alright, take them out while they're running away. Actually, if we can kill our general, it'd probably be a good idea, but... Yeah, I don't think this is worth firing into that. Okay, it looks like they're faster than me. Let's uh, see you guys to skirmish as well. I don't intend to do it because it doesn't really always work. They are really low health though. Like They've only got 55 men left, but you can see their HP is pretty low. We are really not doing too well. To be fair though, there's not much strategy involved here. Like There wasn't much we could do about this. It just happened. If we can kill Nashrak, that would be really good. But he's running away like a little puss. This thing is still firing at that unit particularly poorly. Okay, they've gone. Alright, fire at them. There you go, fire, don't run. This unit's almost gone. That one's almost gone. Fire, <laughs> just trying to kill Nashrak, it's just not working. Okay, he's, he's almost routing. Come on, get him, boys. Have you got any abilities? No, you have not. Should use them earlier anyway if they did. These guys have come back. Alright, try and fire at them. I think um, he's going to have to... Oh, yeah, we did it. I think, yeah, Nashrak went. Wow, that was a particularly poorly fought battle. But to be fair, there wasn't really much we could do, was there? Uh, I should try and kill off as much as possible, but I don't know how that's going to go. These guys might be able to kill some stuff. If I could kill Nashrak... Actually, you know what? He would just come back as a, a stronger lord, so I'm not sure if that's a good idea, to be honest. 
thing is, I don't know what his HP is anyway. Get some more grudge fur shots in there. I'm probably just hitting my own guys, but... Oh, we're killing some orc boys. That's alright. Oh, this unit's like in there. I'm firing at that unit too. I feel like I'm killing my own unit here though. Alright, let's just end it. I'm worried that I'm gonna kill my own guys off too much. I had a good, a good Pyrrhic victory to start this campaign off with. But like, yeah, like I was saying, there was not much I could have done there. I mean, to be fair, I made the pretty big mistake of putting my weakest unit against their strongest. But on the other hand, that gave my stronger units the opportunity to take down their weaker ones. But it just didn't really work that way, did it? Pretty sure their entire army has survived. Maybe this unit's dead. I don't know. But there's a good chance they all survived, which would be quite upsetting. But maybe we'll be all right. We can start recruiting some units now anyway. Um, we got 53 kills on this thing. That's not bad because, I mean, it's just it's decent kills overall. And it was mostly on their strongest units. All right, so there's one unit dead. Yeah, that's it. This guy survived with, like, no HP. All right, so we have the option to release the captives. We got some money, but we replenish less or we execute them. We got leadership. Let's take that. All right. Where did their army go? Did it go into the town? Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's behind the town. All right, well, we got a thousand bucks for defeating them, but they're about to take... Or they're about to replenish a whole bunch. So that's unfortunate. Can't even get back into town, so I'm... Oh, hold on. Maybe... No, we didn't level up. Because I know there's the plus 10% movement range. I would have been able to get in there if I'd gotten that, but... I didn't... Well, in that case, let's just recruit a bunch of uh, Dwarf Warriors. This is not a really nice feature I, I like about this, so you can actually tell how many units you can recruit this turn. So you can recruit free. Um, if we get attacked right now by that army, we're going to be pretty... Uh, it's going to be pretty rough, I think. But I still want to sit here anyway. Um, I think that's about all I can do for this turn. We can't recruit any heroes yet, because we need buildings for that. We... Oh yeah, the Lord, by the way, we can recruit um, Ungrim at some point, but we need to unlock, uh, we need to occupy a the Karak Kadrin settlement before we can do that. Um, but yeah, we can get him later, so that's cool. We can already get a bunch of other Lords right now, but we don't want that, obviously. Alright, let's end the turn, let's see what they do. If we were able to kill off a few more of their units, that would have been good, but okay, they're not going to come out. And attack me at least. I wonder if they're making more units as well though. Because if that's the case then they're going to probably... Obviously if we attack their town it's going to be tough to do that. Top knots and teeth snatches are at war. We recruited some dwarf warriors. I think next turn we'll be able to make quarrelers. So that's going to be good at least. Alright, we probably want to recruit three more units. I've only got that. If I were to go right now... We'd have... What do they get? Can we? Yeah, we can tell. Uh, it's this one. So they get two orc boys and three goblin units. Mm, I don't know. I don't think we can take that. The thing is, if I recruit three units, they're going to recruit three as well. But that's all right. Actually, can I get back into Karaka Karak? I wonder if I can attack them in one turn from here. I think I can. But this way, I replenish a little faster. I can actually use the uh, global recruitment as well. It's a different thing, but it costs more to recruit from that one. And well, actually, that, that's the and it takes two, takes two turns. But those are the only things that technically it's 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 useful because if you're in a need to make units as fast as possible and you got money to spare, you can technically make nine units in two turns instead of six in two turns, um, which is pretty useful. But obviously, we don't need that right now. So I think maybe next turn I will attack once these units have replenished a little bit more. I don't really want to lose this hammer unit. Oh my god, they cost a lot of upkeep though. 270. But obviously they're quite a lot better than my Dwarf Warriors. They're, just an, they're an offensive unit rather than a defensive unit. I have to use them offensively just now. Like if I flank around with them, they'll do a lot better. Um, They want to join my war against the Scabby Eye. They're willing to pay me 100 bucks for it. Or, I need to pay them 100 bucks for them to join me. Uh, yeah, join me in the war against Scabby Eye. Um, sure. Got anything else you want to... We can do? No? Alright. Fine. You guys can take them out for me. That'd be fine. Who the hell are they? So, okay. They just came into the territory and then buggered off. That was weird. Woods of Magic Change. Alright, so this is just something that pops up constantly. And it literally is that the Winds of Magic have, have changed. 
Barak Far against Gavia, good stuff. Um, our construction is complete. We recruited some dwarf warriors. Oh, oh, it looks like the army buggered off. Well, in that case, I'm just going to go and attack it right now, I guess. Um, so we are now able to recruit quarrelers, and once we get uh, it was this one, right? Yeah. Once we get the armory, we are able to recruit the great weapons quarrelers. But the thing is, um. Crap, how do I, well. I pin them? There we go. Um, the unit has a shield and will block 30% of all small arms missile fire hitting in from the hitting it from the front. Um, is that okay? There you go. The great weapon unit, obviously, because it has a great weapon, it it wields a two handed weapon. It doesn't have that, it does have um. Armor-piercing weapon strength, which these guys don't have, but technically the cores shouldn't get into melee anyway, so it's like a nice thing to do um, To use them as a, a melee or like have them as a backup melee unit essentially, but it's just sort of defeats their purpose because they're They're meant for ranged and if you can keep them at range then obviously that would be preferable over getting them into melee Whereas you would have your dwarf warriors or whatever units um, Would be better at doing the same thing so I don't know. I don't know where these guys went, but I'm assuming went into Mount Squighorn or something. But we're going to attack it right now. We can actually just about get there, so that's good. But we're going to do that next time. Um, I'm actually going to leave the episode here, the first episode. I want to get just a shorter... Normally, obviously, I record for about 45 minutes or so, but I think a shorter 30-minute episode is fine for our first episode on Total War Warhammer, the dwarves on Engineer Difficulty. So until next time, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and goodbye.